Tonight on News Center, high school students get a taste of the life of a college art student. Women's Virtue shows us the queen chair. Highlights from the Eagles baseball game. We relax and howl McDowell. The drag show comes to MSU. All this and more tonight on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Josh Bryant. And I'm Greg Taylor. Here's what's making headlines for March 14th, 2019. The Senate voted today to block Donald Trump's national emergency declaration on the southern border after the House of Representatives passed it last month. Even with pushback from the Republican Party, there will still not be enough votes to overturn a veto. Moorhead State Spectrum hosted their annual drag show on Tuesday. I met with New Center's Kirsten Baum to discuss how seven people organized the event, what they want to come out of it, and their new charity. So we like to like help a charity every year. We've we we we've recently switched to a new uh, charity called they're called DNS Community Services. Uh, they support a people with mental disabilities and help them out with life skills and things like that. And we thought it would be amazing to do a local charity. We've, I think, yeah, we've recently switched to this. We, I don't know our last charity, to be honest, but I'm happy we're doing something local. Well, with the big event, uh, obviously, comes a lot of stress and a lot of issues, but we did a good job handling everything. And I think this is gonna be a very successful successful show like the shows in the past and I'm pretty excited for it. I'm <laughs> I'm so excited to uh, host this show. I'm so excited to be the president next semester and actually be on stage uh, hosting with Georgia Peach. She is amazing. Well, we're, on, we're the only LGBTQ plus organization on campus to my knowledge and we like to support diversity and help people find themselves because that's what college is really about and I think this really helps. Um, this lets you express your gender identity and express who you are. Show, just show everyone what you can do and like what you believe and who you really are. Like that's our biggest uh, message to students and to anyone that come. A new law has been signed by Governor Matt Bevin allowing Kentuckians ages 21 and up to lawfully conceal and carry a gun without a permit or training. Kentucky lawmakers approved this bill earlier this month, and Bevin says that he is the most of Kentucky's support. Senate Bill 150 is also backed by the National Rifle Association, but groups such as Louisville Metro Police and the Kentucky State Fraternal Order of Police oppose this bill. This new law takes effect in late June. Stanford researchers have compiled comprehensive evidence that suggests there is racial disparity in traffic stops as reported by NBC News. This collection of data is said to be their largest ever collected in regard to traffic stops. The project examined nearly 100 million traffic stops in 21 states agencies and 29 police departments. The disparity comes from a heightened stop rate for black and Latino uh, drivers with seemingly less evidence than used when stopping white drivers. Women's Virtue was able to express how much they care for each other during their annual Queen's Chair. <laughs> for some, a few kind words go a long way. Women's Virtue held their Queen's Chair event last Wednesday. President of Women's Virtue, Precious Walker, explains what exactly Queen's Share is. So it's really more of an empowerment meeting so that way we can really connect more as a group. We'll sit the girls in front of this board and then each member will write something good about her. And she doesn't get to see it until the very end and then we'll take a picture with her like surrounded by it. Walker also expresses how the Queen's Chair has impacted her. I'm really excited to see how the girls will like it because it was a really big hit my freshman year and it's really what pushed me and like made me stay with Women's Virtue. So I really hope they like it. Just in case you missed out on the Queen's Chair, Women's Virtue has some more upcoming events. We will be in Great Pretenders next Wednesday and we're really, really excited about that. It's our second year. Last year we walked away with two different awards. We're hoping to get them all. 
So we're really hyped about it. And then we have our personal fashion show, uh, the 27th after spring break. There'll be a nude fashion show. We won't be a nude, but we'll be displaying the colors of us and exploring the word nude because it's more than just what people see. For News Center, I'm Olivia Leet. Now let's check in with Olivia Lee for a preview of this week's weather. Yeah, so today it's been a really pretty day temperature-wise. It's been 70 degrees. Um, the clouds have been out a lot today, and there is a chance of thunderstorms tonight. But besides that, this week is looking pretty good. The temperatures are a little lower, but it is going to be sunny for the rest of this week. So awesome. We have I'm something so to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Olivia. When we get back, we have an interview with the director of a new show coming to campus next semester. Taking place at the Claypool Young Art Building, Morin State University's Department of Art and Design is home to a number of programs and classes. You can take courses in painting, drawing, graphic design, history, photography, and more. You can even obtain a degree in art education or a Bachelor of Fine Arts. To find out more about the Department of Art and Design, you can call 606-783-2766 or email arde at moreheadstate.edu. Back. I'm here with Bugs Reinhardt and Jacob McDowell. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Great. Doing well. How are you? Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the show that you guys are going to be directing. Well, right now the rights are currently pending for the musical title of show. And um, it's a musical about two guys writing a musical. And they bring in their friends. And it's uh, pretty cool. Um, I'll be handling the artistic directing. And my colleague here will be handling the musical directing. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So what's the process of starting to direct something and going through something from start to finish? So we essentially, the first step is pending the rights, like we said. So we're waiting on that to kind mm -hmm. of come through. And we expect the rights by the summer, um, but we don't have a definitive date yet. Gotcha. Um, but once that starts, we come back to school. And as the musical director, I'll be posting audition cuts for people to be learning, uh, you know, the music and the harmonies and things like that. And then they'll come in and have those prepared. And once we have the casting sorted through musical and acting auditions, then we kind of begin the process of, um, you know, hammering things out and making right. sure that it's a solidified show. And you can yeah. kind of talk about your end of that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but it is a comedy. So working with the acting and, like, the comedic timing, just, just make sure that it, it's correct and um, is honoring the playwrights. Yeah, of course. So how did you guys come to get this opportunity? So um, every year, the theater faculty allow the students to submit plays that they would like to see go up. And specifically, there's one opportunity every year for a second stage show. And what that means is it can either be student directed or mostly kind of student organized, things like that. Um, they haven't done a second stage musical in a really long time. Like, we've never seen one in mm -hmm. our time here. 
Um, but we expressed interest in directing the musical, so they encouraged us to you know, submit some ideas. So we submitted a few different musicals we were interested in, and this one ended up getting picked. That's awesome. That's really cool. So around what time can people expect to be seeing things about it? When will it come out? When, when it's in the process? So um, the dates, again, it's still pending, but the dates are October 3rd through the 6th of next year. And um, the first three days will be a performance at 7 o'clock. And then on Sunday, we'll have a Sunday matinee that starts at 2. So. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. We'll be right back with your weather update. Hey there. Ever wish you knew how to control fire? Or had a mini version of yourself? Or you could be anywhere you want with a snap of your fingers? Well then, become a part of... Convergent Media! For more information, go to moreheadstate.edu slash convergentmedia. Yo, why are you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in your room and boom, chicks. That's what I'm talking about. Come check out Moorhead State Public Radio, conveniently located in Breckenridge Hall. Here at MSPR, students can work in a real newsroom environment and learn real-world skills that will help them in the work world. Students at MSPR can gain actual on-air broadcast experience. Some students even have the opportunity to produce their own programs. MSPR also provides community programming providing local news, sports, weather, and current events. Check out MSPR, where opportunities soar. This is Charlie. Charlie wakes up and gets ready for class like most students. But Charlie doesn't have breakfast. Charlie feels unfulfilled. This is Nick. Nick gets up and gets ready as well. But Nick makes breakfast and feels great. Don't skip the most important meal of the day. Eat breakfast. Good afternoon, Moorhead. I'm Olivia Leeton. This is your weather. So currently in Moorhead, it's been 70 degrees today. There has been an overcast today, so the sun hasn't been out that much. But still, the temperature has been really nice out there. 50% of precipitation and winds have been up to 29 miles per hour today. So it has been really breezy out there. As you can see on your temperature map, all across Kentucky, it has been really beautiful. 70 degrees across the whole bluegrass. Can't ask for better and with that. 75 is the high in Moorhead. So if you've been outside today, you felt how warm it really is. For tonight, we are going to have scattered thunderstorms. So be on the lookout for that. A low of 44 degrees, 20% precipitation. So I'm pretty sure the storms have already started now. So just be prepared. For tomorrow, it's going to be cloudy, a high of 47. Um, but we are pretty lucky. It's not going to rain a lot tomorrow or the next day. So just cloudy, 47 degrees, and your sun will rise around 7.51 in the morning. As you can see for your seven-day forecast here, tomorrow will be 47, sun and rain, um, colder temperatures. Um, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be around 44, 47 degrees. Sun and clouds pretty much the entire weekend. On Sunday, there is a late chance of rain, around 30%. Um, and then Monday, it'll be 45 degrees. Breezy and cooler on that day, with your low being around 29 degrees. But the sun will still be out, so maybe you can still get some warmth from that. And then Tuesday, it'll be 48 degrees, cloudy as well on that day. So hopefully it won't be too cold out there with the temperature being 48, but we'll just have to see. And then Wednesday starts spring for us, but it will be 44 degrees on spring, and we will get a next system of storms that day, around 50% for that day. It's going to be pretty ugly, so just be on the lookout for that. Well, Moorhead, this has been your weather, and now on to Isaac with sports.
Thanks, Olivia. Here's what's going on in sports. After beating Jacksonville State in their first game in the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament, the women's basketball team took the floor this past Friday. The number two seeded Eagles faced the third seeded UT Martin. Senior Miranda Crockett carried the team's scoring load by adding 16 points. Mackenzie Calvert added 15 points of her own to go along with six assists. Despite these efforts, the Eagles lost by a final score of 68 to 58. However, the Eagles season is not over as they were invited to participate in the National Invitational Tournament with game details to follow soon. The men's basketball team had a successful first round of the Ohio Valley Conference by beating ace-seeded SIU Edwardsville with a final score of 72-68. to The Eagles then faced Austin P. a day later in which the Eagles saw strong double-figure performances from their entire starting five. The team was led by junior Jordan Walker, who scored 22 points and added four assists. A.J. Hicks almost recorded a double-double with 13 points and nine assists. However, these efforts fell short as Moorhead lost 95-81. to This ended the Eagles season. The rifle team saw very successful results from their appearance in the 2019 NCAA Rifle Championship. Alexa Potts placed 19th overall with a score of 590. Brandon Breyer also had a strong performance by posting a score of 578, which was good enough to place him in the 23rd spot. This ends the Eagles' achievement-filled and most successful rifle season of school history. The Moorhead State's men's golf team competed in the Pinehurst Intercollegiate Tournament in North Carolina. The team saw strong performances by Tyler Hillier and Joe Muschong, both of whom shot below 230. The team as a whole placed 12th out of 14 teams. Both the men's and women's golf teams are back in action on Sunday. The Moorhead State baseball team was in action this past Tuesday against West Virginia. Many fans gathered at Allen Field Tuesday afternoon to watch Moorhead take on the West Virginia Mountaineers. It was a rough start to the game with West Virginia hitting a three-run home run in the first inning. West Virginia continued to grow their lead in the third inning by scoring another two runs. That's when pitcher Alex Garbrick was pulled from the game for reliever Jason Goh. The Eagles would go on to score three runs thanks to Connor Pauley and Trevor Snyder, who each added one RBI. The Eagles would lose the game, however, with a final score of 9-3. The Eagles are back in action tomorrow at 4 p.m. at home. For News Center, I'm Isaac Kroon. Stay tuned for more news after the break. Are you interested in becoming a service dog sitter or handler? Four Paws for Ability at MSU allows members to get involved with the Service Dog Association. 
During your membership, you could help future service dogs get used to a public setting and get accustomed to staying on the clock in a home environment. For more information, follow MSU 4 Paws or email msusda at outlook.com. On Wednesday morning, a wreck on I-64 involving a pickup truck and semi left one driver dead. The coroner was called out to I-64 near Bath County early Wednesday as a truck and a tractor trailer collided on the interstate. The driver of the pickup truck was killed in the collision as the other driver was injured and taken to the hospital. Traffic was recruited as the, as the fuel from the diesel truck was clean. The truck company claims there will be no environmental effect from the spill. Kick off spring break with a free massage. Any full-time employee of Moorhead State University can relax with a 15-minute massage in the Howe McDowell building located across from ADUC. Hi, I'm Kayla Cundiff. I'm the Benefits Manager for the Office of Human Resources. We are offering chair massages for full-time employees at no cost as part of MSU's comprehensive wellness program. This program has been overwhelmingly popular and perceived as a program that enhances well-being for the workday and beyond. Chair massage can do wonders for body, mental state, sense of well-being, and happiness. Free 15-minute chair massages are available for full-time employees on the following dates, March 14th, March 20th, March 28th, April 4th, April 11th, April 18th, and April 25th. Location is 307 Howe McDowell. If employees would like to learn more about the free massage, they can contact Kayla Cundiff in the Office of Human Resources. New Center Sahara LaForce attended the Moorhead State Art Department's annual high school art day event on Wednesday. The Claypool Young Art Building held its annual high school art day event this past Wednesday marking the final day of the Burley Cole Art Exhibition and Competition. Art students from all across the region submitted all different types of artwork, including animation, graphic art, and ceramics. This event has been a big hit with high schoolers and their teachers for many years. They love to come every year. Um, I limited it to, last year I limited it to 25 and like they were furious and so this year I brought 40 and I still had a wait list of kids trying to get in. So they love this. They love getting to come to try the pottery wheel. They love to come and see what other things um, is available in art once you get past high school. Audrey Dawson, an education major who worked the event, told us more about the various activities high schoolers could participate in. But I do know that they have ceramics going on to view, and I think they might be doing some hands-on stuff with that. They're showing a video about graphic design in the real world. There's some kind of event going on where they're putting paint on their face, and I'd like to know more about that myself. Um, they're doing different kinds of cultural paintings, of course the sculpture competition, and then just general viewing of art. In addition to those activities, students could also learn to develop black and white photos, observe Indian Rangoli and Jyoti paintings, and watch as students Stephanie McNeil and Leanna Spurrier gave a demonstration of an Indian holly dance. Actress Lori Laughlin, known for portraying the character Aunt Becky in the TV sitcom Full House, was arrested Wednesday morning in Los Angeles. This arrest comes after news broke that the actress was allegedly involved in a college admissions cheating scam with the University of Southern California. Laughlin is among many caught in the alleged scam, involving such high-profile schools as Georgetown, Stanford, Yale, and USC. According to reports, Laughlin and her husband, Massimo, Giuliani gave $500,000 in bribes to wrongfully say that their daughters were recruits for the USC crew team, ensuring their admission to the school. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin responded to the mass sick outs arranged by Kentucky teachers on social media this past Monday. Bevin claims that the sick outs are at the expense of kids and that the teachers are getting their sick days reloaded so that, so that they can call in sick when they aren't. Bevan states, this is the kind of stuff that taxpayers, that's those of you watching this, you should be offended by that. 
Jefferson County Teachers Association President Brent McKim responded saying the governor's statement was false and ridiculous. There is no way for us to reload sick days. That's just not an option. And it just is a strange thing from our point of view for him to even be saying such a thing. After the break, we'll be right back with more news. The United States grounded all Boeing 737 MAX aircraft due to recent performance issues. The Boeing 737 is the model of aircraft that crashed on Sunday evening in Ethiopia as well as in, in Indonesia last October. All passengers and crew were killed on both flights. Various pilots, flight attendants, and passengers have said that the jet has felt dangerous. On Tuesday, the Federal Aviation Administration said they have seen no systematic performance issues and they do not see any reason to ground the jet since then. However, satellite-based tracking information indicated similarities between the two crashes. This data resulted in FAA making the call to ground the jets. They are now grounded worldwide. President Donald Trump released his 2020 budget proposal. At a record-breaking $4.75 trillion budget, the proposal seeks to increase military spending as well as funding for the wall, while making a near $1 trillion cut to Medicare and Medicaid. The cuts also include a 10% cut to education and $10 billion on Social Security funding. The proposal recommends a 5% increase in defense spending and allocates $8.6 billion for the wall. The House of Representatives has made a unanimous vote calling for any final report from the Robert Miller Russia investigation to be made available to the public. The vote passed 420 to 0. The resolution will have the investigation's findings made public with the exception of any classified material. The full report will also be released to Congress. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Gerald Nadler says it is important that Congress stand up for all for the principle of the full transparency. Spring break starts next week and the university will be closed. Students living on campus are required to leave campus by Friday, March 15th at 7 p.m. Eagle Lake Apartments, Mays Hall Apartments, Normal Hall Apartments, and Fields Hall and West Manon will remain open during the break. If you are in need of housing accommodations, contact Leslie Barger in the Office of Student Housing to request a room change during the break. She can be reached at 
one. That's all the news we have for you this week. Join us next week for your weekly news update.